Okay, I'm gonna take you for every stage of making this table from the raw material right the way through to delivering it to Ireland. It's English sycamore, similar to some of the maple in the States and is actually related to some maple, the kind of Norway sycamore is part of the Acer maple family. You don't see it until it's fully machined and polished, but it also has the curls and ripples of the kind of American US maple, really wonderful. So I don't really want to talk all the way through this video. I think most of it's pretty obvious, but I will point out here, you can see the underside is not completely flat. Uh, I often do this, um, letting the resin run under. It mustn't run under the whole slab. Um, if it does, you need to cut some relief grooves because of cupping and movement. You don't want one side of a slab completely sealed and the other side just oiled or whatever, because you know you will get different movements top and bottom. Now this may look a bit kind of Heath Robinson, but this is actually quite a complex method. Um, I don't want any resin on the outside of this table, it doesn't need it. There's a couple of spots where it might go a bit thin and I want it, but I'm going to basically seal the underside and make the underside of this slab watertight. If you need more info on anything you see here, including the mould making, what I'm making the moulds with, I'll put a link in the description and I've got a video which is a playlist showing you every step of making moulds and dealing with it. I also have a small Amazon shop and I'll put a link to a Glasscast website where I buy the epoxy. Okay, so the client was sent a sample, so I'm just literally going to mix this to match the sample that's been agreed. Um, I'm then going to pour a couple of mil to seal the bottom of the mould. It also helps just putting a couple of mil on the bottom if you want it to run under, if you're going to build up the bottom. Uh, saves kind of getting large airlocks. So if you're interested in this router sled that I'm using, we actually build the full system. Fill in the attached form in the descriptions and we'll get back to you with a quote. So this is something a bit different because this is our classic spider leg, but it's really tall and it's going to be for meetings, people standing and using stalls. So we're actually going to fill this with some kiln dried sand right down these tubes. I'm going to put like 40 kilograms, maybe 50. Um, 10, and 10 or 15 the tube and you can see what Will's done here really good job he's capped this off so this will be like completely tight well they're going to put in a little bracket which has the thread for the adjustable foot Okay, so this is a kind of aging of the steel. I do it with various chemicals, acids and oils. Bit of a concoction I made up myself. Um, I'm sure if you want to do something, you could play around, 
get something similar. I do offer this as a kind of exclusive for Manor Wood to my clients. Okay, something you don't see much, I do it quite a lot, is sculpting from the live edge into the resin to give it that really natural look. It's a really time consuming process. Start with an angle grinder, then I finish off with a random orbital. In this case, it's the Rotex Festool. I find that is the best for the job. When it comes to finishing these wide slabs, I think this is like 1.1 or 1.2 at the widest part. It doesn't fit in my wide belt sander. And I found switching to a kind of handheld wide belt, this is the BS105 from Festool, really easy as this massive frame keeps everything flat, rips through the material, then switch to your Rotex, then work through the grits all the way from 120 right up to 320 or wherever you're going to finish. As you saw earlier, I let the resin run under to help with the thickness of the table. This is putting in some relief grooves just to help with any cupping or movement. I'm using the Tipman bit, I love the Tipman tools, I use it for everything. We've got a discount code most of the time from Manor Wood as well. This is their Perfect V, which is a super sharp V. If you're used to me on this channel, um, you'll know I do a lot of this, <laughs> working through the grits. It's, it's not rocket science, it's just taking your time. The biggest mistakes are made at the lower grits, 40s, 60s, 80s, and even 120. So you want to spend a lot of time at 120, a really long time at 150, and maybe 180 or skip to 180, and then like your 220s and your 240s. That was it working through the grits. Uh, in my case, it was about 120, right the way through to 320. And at the last couple of grits, I switched sanders, just went on a very light pass. So now I'm applying the Odie's oil. It's absolutely fantastic across the wood and resin join. So Odie's can be a single application, but I actually build up layers using their penetrating oils and then I buff it in, do it over a week or two. So I spend quite a lot of time to get that kind of glass-like finish. But the great thing is you can still feel the texture of the wood unlike a kind of two-pack lacquer. So I always start doing the underside of the tables first, this is stopping it cupping, you don't want to seal one side and leave the other overnight. So buff it on, leave it for an hour or so, maybe two, buff it off, flip it and then you can start your work on the main top side. What's also great is we now have a UK seller, I'll put a link in the description so we can buy it in the UK, really quick and easy next day delivery. So next up, doing the rebates for the base of the leg connection. So I'm using uh, this amazing cutter from Tipman. I've spoke about it before. It's like an up-down spiral with a chip breakout. And it really reduces the load when you're pushing, makes it much easier to get through the material. And the edges are super clean, even across the resin wood join. Now I do have, until April, and I'm trying to extend it, I have a 20% off for all Manor Wood um, viewers, so I'm going to put a link for you guys. So this is the first table we filled with sand. This is a test with no sand. Because it's so tall, I think it's about a meter and just a bit higher for them to stand out in the office. I didn't want everyone leaning on it like an office party and it tipping over. Okay, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to make one of these tables yourself or just want to support the channel, you can join us on the Patreon site. These videos are much more in depth, kind of camera over the shoulder view of all the builds on YouTube. Until the next one, thanks so much for watching and all your support. See you later.
made it to Dublin. Um, it's not raining at the moment. It's starting to spit actually, as I say that. 